H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Just to show you, I did a group by on department ID and did, did a sum up. So at this point what we are doing is we are trying to learn the designer. Once the designer part is complete I will come back to the workflow manager and then we will go in details with all these session properties. Okay? At this point I am not going through any of the session properties but once my uh, transformation is done I will come back to this session and go in details with the session properties. So let's start the task. So I uh, can see in the session has read one hundred seven records and loaded twelve records because it's a group by. So group by means uh, all for each department I will have only one row, right? I think I made a mistake here. directory I completely forgot that. So one thing is by you see if you look here I have not given the output file directory but still you saw that session has read the records and it has loaded the records. So that means that somewhere it has created, generated that output file. So I let me show you that one also. Uh, um, the default place where uh, uh, Informatica generates the output file. Let me show you. So this is a path. If you at any point of time if you forget to give the path of the output files, then this is the path where Informatica by default generates the output files. So we will see in uh, any way those things in detail, but just in case if you are curious, I told you. So let's start the workflow one more time. <coughs>
Now if you look to the file, you will see for each department, <coughs> excuse me, for each department you will see one record. <coughs> Why? Because what I have done is I have done the group by on department. So for each department I will get the total sum of salary paid for each department. Now, just think of this. If you you have let's say a, mm, a 10 million records and you have to do a group by now usually how informatica does the group by is let's say let's think of this i i have given you a file same file i'll in an excel okay and i have told you to give me the total sum of salary in each department and and I want you to do the process manually. So how will you do it? Is you will read the first record and see what is the department. So you saw the first record is oh, let me open the file, then it's easier to explain. Hmm. So if if I put this data into an Excel, what uh, and you, if I ask you to give give me the sum of each department, what you have to do is you will read the first record, you will see okay this uh, this guy is getting a salary of 24,000 and he is de from department number 90. Next one is from department number 90 and he is getting 17,500. So what you will do is you will add with 24,000 plus 17,500. The third one is also 17,500. The fourth one is not department number 90. So you will skip this and you will keep on continuing until you get another department number 90. And at the, maybe at the end of the file, you reached at the end of the file and you found there is no more department number 90. So that means that is the total. So what I'm trying to tell you is, so for each sum, you have to scan the tables. Like So since I have 12 distinct departments in this file, so I have, the, I have to scan the tables 12 times to get the sum of salary of for each department ID. Right. Now, just think of this. If I have a, a data file, if I have a data file with 10 million records and that file has maybe some thousands, maybe 20,000 and distinct records and I want to do a group by on those 20,000 um, uh, distinct values then I have to in a normal process I have to read this data set of 10 million records 20,000 times. Alright? Any questions? Anyone who couldn't understand the concept? Hello? Are you guys are there at all? Uh, Shobhan? Yeah. Okay. So, Can you yeah, I, 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 I see such a silence, so I, could, I got confused. Okay. So, anyone, uh, so, I, so everyone understood the concept, right? Right now. Anyone who Shobhan, can you repeat concept? this concept one more time? Yeah, sure, I can do. So, that's what I want from you guys. At least if you don't understand, let me know immediately. Yeah, I, don't, I don't, like, if I keep on asking the questions and if I don't get a response, then I consider that you understood the concept. So I don't mind to repeat the things multiple times, but if you, let's say if you don't understand it and if you don't speak up, then, like, I will consider that you understood and I will go forward. So I don't want that. <laughs> so what I'm, trying to tell you is, let's say if I give you this file and I ask you to give me the sum of each department, the sum of salary of each department, what you have to do is you will read the first record, take the sum and see the department ID, read the second record, if the department ID is same, you will add up the salary, third record, department ID is same, 90, you will add up the salary, fourth record, department number is 60, it's not the same, 
will skip that and that way you will continue reading the records until the end of the file because you don't know maybe the last record is again department number 90. So and you how, how many times you keep on doing this? The number of distinct department IDs I have, right? Because I am doing a group by or department ID. So since I have 12 distinct department IDs, so you will read this record, read the whole complete file 12 times, right? So you will read the complete it file 12 times. And you will um, uh, to give me the sum of salary by each department. Now just think of this. So if the same if the same file, let's say if I have a file which has 10 million records, and instead of department ID, I'm trying to do a, a sum of sum of some value. Okay. So let's think of this. I have a uh, um, uh, I have a, a data a data from from uh, Walmart, right? So I have the Walmart transaction data. So definitely Walmart in a day, Walmart does maybe 10 million, maybe not 10 million, but definitely 1 million transactions a day. With uh, when I accumulate all the Walmarts of United States, right? So uh, if maybe even uh, more than 1 million transactions per day. So now, if I if just in case, if someone wants to do a group by, I based on products. Like I want to see which are the different products which is sold by Walmart maximum in the whole day. So I just want to do a count on the products, not the sum of the selling price. But so that means at the end of the day, I'll get a file. Or data which will say, okay, today Walmart sales sold uh, 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 500 Samsung TV, 200 LG TV, 300 something else. So product wise, I will I want to see how many counts, how how many uh, numbers of product that specific product Walmart has sold. So now, how many distinct products Walmart sell every day? Maybe. Maybe some uh, thousands, right? Maybe some some 2,000, 3,000 line of products Walmart sells every day. So when I'm doing a group by on the product ID on a file which has 10 million, uh, maybe sorry, not not 10 million, maybe 2 million records, and let's say the product line is maybe 2,000. So I have to read that file which has 2 million records 2,000 times, right? So that could be a performance bottleneck. So to avoid those that kind of situation and to improve the performance, there is a strategy which is called add a sorter in front of before the aggregator. And we'll see how that helps. So what I'll do is I'll add a sorter here. I'll add a sorter transformation in front of my aggregator transformation. And then on which column I should do the sorting. I have to do the sorting on the column on which I am doing the group by. Okay, So I will do the sorting on the department ID, let's say ascending. And in the aggregated transformation, what I have to do is I have a property called sorted input. I will check that property. Unless I check the sorted input property, Informatica will not understand that the data is sorted before it is going into the aggregator transformation. Now what is the advantage of sorting the data before I aggregate it? The advantage is now all my products, let's say, 
uh, when I'm giving the example of Walmart, so all my products are, are now sorted, right? Uh, now, uh, or let's say, let's take the example of department ID, that way you'll understand. At least you can see the data, so you'll understand better. So now, uh, it seems it's, uh, so uh, if, if my data is already sorted, that means all the department ID 10 will go at the top, right? So now in for how Informatica will do the aggregation, he will read the first salary, which is department number 10, read the second salary, which is department number 10, read the third salary, which is department number 10, and add them up, read the fourth salary, which is department number 20. So now he got department number 20, he knows that department number 10 is already complete, and whatever the sum I got is a final sum. So the advantage is, with a single scan of all the records, I got the total aggregated value. So uh, uh, I have to scan the full data set only once, and I will get the aggregated value. Anyone who couldn't understand the concept? Okay. So, so to improve the performance, if I have an aggregator and if the mapping is taking too much of time, then immediate task is to add a um, sort of transformation before the aggregator to improve the performance of the mapping. Now, let's think of this. Let's say I have this thing. Mm. I am uh, doing a group by on. Uh, uh, let's say put commissions also. Uh, Shobhan? Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. So it is really breaking. I don't know if I am fa I am the only one facing this issue. Uh, for anyone else have the same issue? No. We can hear it clearly. Okay. Then probably you have to uh, drop and connect. One more time and see. Okay, so let's see this. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to do a group by on department ID and also on. Um, okay, not this one. And uh, let's say uh, no, sorry, not this one. Let's say uh, in the sorter. I want to show you something in the sorter. So let's say I want to do a, a sorting of this one and let's say salary. So this is a general question, okay? So tell me how it will work. So what I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing a sorting on department ID which is ascending and sorting on salary which is de descending. How Informatica will react to this. Or anyone, if you, if someone knows SQL, tell me how this will work. What is my expected value? I think first it will get uh, sorted by department ID, and uh -huh. after that, on that. Uh, it will again uh, look for the salary and then sort it. So if I do a sorting on the uh, department ID, okay. So let's say mm -hmm. I got the sorting on department ID, so I have 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30 and so on. Now it's in the ascending order. Now if I, after that if I do the sorting on the department I, uh, salary, then my first sorting is already this sorted, right? 
because my maximum salary may be from department number 90, so he will go at the top. I'm sorry. Anyone? Okay. So this is how it will work. So it will first sort the data based on department ID. Okay. It will first sort the data based on department ID. Now, so I have 10, 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, and so on. Now, within 10, if I have same salaries, right? Hello? So, within, uh, within department ID uh, 10, if I have uh, my salaries, will be um, in the descending order. Got my point. So let me show you something. So and that is true for aggregator also. So if I do an aggregator, let's say department ID. Let me show you this. So um, it will be more likely a department ID, and I think I have a sorter, right? Let's do this and let's see. So we have this one. So let's see how, how the data will look like. <coughs> Employee filter, right? So employee number 10 is fine, so employee number 20 is fine, so let's say, let's look at this, employee number 30, eh, sorry, department number 30. For department number 30, I have salaries, net salary, okay, let's do this.
that's not saving. Now uh, let's see. Uh, first two because there is no duplicate department ID. So for this one, department ID, these are all duplicates, right? 30, 30, 30, 30. Within that department ID, see the salary is descending order. So basically how it works is it will first look it will first look for it will try to <clears throat> do the ascending order of department ID. Now, if I have duplicate department IDs, then within that data, it will again descend, make the salary as a descending order. Got it? Any questions? Uh, Shobhan? Hmm. I just want to know one more time, how does Informatica save the performance and we do the group by on department? Not the group by, you, you mean to say when you do the sorting on department, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, what happens is when I'm doing the sorting on department, what before the, so let's say this is my, let's close all this one. So this is my source file, right? Now all this, this will be like department number 10, 10, 10. And then started 20, 20, 20, 20, then 30, 30, 30. That's how, right? Now when Informatica will start reading this data, he will read the first salary. You will see, okay, department number 10. That's fine. Second record, department number, uh, you will read the salary and department number 10. Okay. Fine. You will sum up. Third record, department number 10. You will sum up. Fourth record, okay, no, this is not department number 10. So by the time he reads the fourth record, all the department number 10 data is already, sum of salary of department number 10 is already done. Got it? Now he started doing it for the department number 20. By the time he reads department number 20, his sum of department number 20 is already done. So with by doing a single scan of the complete data set, he can finish the <coughs> um, aggregation. So he don't, he will not have to read the data set multiple times. Single scan, it's done. Got it? Got it. Thank you. So now, Okay, now let's try to understand this. Uh, let me go back here. Let's remove this one. Okay. So I have department ID. Now I want to show you something. So tell me, you know, let's say if I pass the aggregator and if I don't do anything, what will, what will happen? So. This is what I'm doing. I am uh, okay. Let's yeah. Let's do several different things. Okay. So what I did is in the aggregator, I have not done any group by. I have not mentioned any group by port, and I have told like okay, sum of salary. What will happen? What would be my output? Anyone? Sum of salary of all the records. Okay, let's see. <laughs> oh, what is that? So actually, this is telling because it does not have a partitioning license. That's why. Uh, 
uh, or let's say this one. Uh, what I do is I do a group by on uh, department ID, and I don't take the sum of salary. What I do is I take the salary. So what would be your output? So I'm doing a group by, but I'm not doing any aggregation function. So if you do this, then you will get group by A of each department, and he will take the first salary of each department. That's it. Let's see the properties of uh, aggregator. So one important thing is if you uh, do a sorting of data before it comes to a, uh, aggregator, it's important to check this box sorted input. If you don't do a sorted input, then what happens is yeah, even though your data is sorted, aggregator uh, Informatica will not understand that data, your data is sorted and he will treat the data as if it is not sorted. And performance wise you will not see any improvement. So if you use the sorted uh, sorter, then you have to use the sorted input. Otherwise you will not see any performance. Now, <coughs> usually, now, now onwards you will see many of the <laughs> many of the transformations, in many of the transformations you will see these two terms, data cache and um, index cache. Let's talk a little bit about data cache and index cache and how they work. Now what happens is whenever, so just think of this, whenever Informatica is doing the aggregation, sum of each department, right, he has to do, a, have to do this calculation, he will assign some temporary space for all this calculation. So that is called your cache memory. Now, an aggregated data cache is the place where he he keeps the data. So basically, if for the aggregator, what Informatica will do is whatever data it is passing into the aggregator, he will will take all the data and put it into the cache and index cache and then there, from there he will do all the calculations and index cache is the uh, place where he temporarily stores the group by conditions and all. Got it? So all the group by, because I can do a group by on 10 different columns, right? So uh, all these conditions have to be stored into data ca uh, index cache and the data itself will go into the data cache. And for different other transformations, index cache has different other significance. But data cache is more or less for all the transformations, wherever they use cache, they use it for to, <coughs> excuse me, to store the data temporarily. Okay. That's the whole purpose of data cache. Now, uh, you can put a number from yourself, but usually we don't mm, uh, give any number. We uh, give uh, we like we let Informatica to decide how much space is required right, for the data cache and for index cache. Okay. So mm, this is all about your mm, uh, aggregator. Any questions from aggregator? No. Okay. And then um, I, I'm not feeling well. I'm, I got a cold, a severe cold. So I think we'll keep for today. We'll keep this much. And we have the uh, tomorrow. We don't have a class. We have the next class on. <coughs> we have the next class on. H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.